Hello Rejoice family and those beyond Rejoice who may be watching with us as we continue our walk through a, a Lutheran approach to what faith is about, again using Luther's small catechism as a springboard for our discussions. And so we've been working through the Ten Commandments and now the Apostles' Creed and we're finishing up the Apostles' Creed today with the, the last article, so the third article on being made holy. So this is what the Apostles' Creed says. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of, of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. So Luther's a explanation of what this means. So Luther says, I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes true, makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and those of all believers, that on the last day the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. Okay, so this is one of the, this is perhaps my favorite of Luther's explanations. It's also one that differentiates how we as Lutherans think about faith from many traditions. So faith for Lutherans is not just understanding. It is not just knowing the right things or believing the right things or saying the right things. Faith itself is a gift, and that's where the beginning of this explanation comes from. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. That faith itself was a work, an act, a gift of God through the Holy Spirit. And does God use concrete things to be a part of how that comes to be? Sure. God uses church. God uses uh, scripture. God uses other people. God uses family and friends to be models of Christ for us. But ultimately, it's the spirit that has to awaken that within us, has to allow us to hear what God is speaking in the midst of God's word. There is this, this element of the the spirit of the, you know, again, the, the word for spirit is the word for wind, breath, and, and this element of the, the, the breath of God or the wind of God that moves over creation or that animates us, that stands between, you know, what I as a pastor might say and what others would receive, that it has to be mediated by God, that faith only comes into being through God's act, and yet that is what God does, and you know, the church is not perfect. The people of God are not perfect. And yet, the Spirit, we believe, continues to create faith. And so we come at it from this perspective of, of generosity, of grace, of a gift. You know, it's this thing that God has given to me. And we believe that not only to me, but to the entire church, to that this is a gift to the church, and, and the reason it's a gift to the church is for the sake of the world. You know, the Spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens, and makes holy. And just as Israel was never to be set apart just so it could be elite or better than everybody else, we as people of God have been given faith, not so that we can lord it over other people, but so that we can understand what Christ means and how we're to live and how we are to share the love of God we've come to know in Jesus Christ with the world around us. You know, it is this, this spirit that makes forgiveness possible. You know, and, and forgives not only, you know, the sins that I may think about, but all sins. You know, we, uh, we at, at Rejoice will often begin with an order of confession and forgiveness where we talk about, you know, I'll, I'll say at the end, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, your sins are forgiven. Now we're going to talk about forgiveness a little bit more when we get to confession, but 
we believe that the Spirit forgives, that this is an act of God to make life possible, to make community possible, to make church possible, to make our world possible. It's something that I think our world needs. We also believe that the that this is a part of where our hope comes from, or this is a big part, this is a central part of where our hope comes from, that we believe that the Spirit of God is active not only in life, but beyond life, and in raising us up with all the resurrected when Christ comes in the second coming. That this is the breath of God, to, you know, to use the language of Ezekiel, that, that moves over the, the dry bones and reanimates them and puts flesh on the bodies and breathes into them and makes them live. This is the, the wind of God, the breath of God that moves over the waters of creation will continue to reign and move over the new creation. It's the, the presence and power of God that's somehow at work in our world, even at times when we don't see or understand. And again, do we fully understand it? No. It's a gift. We, we walk into it. We live into it. We live in it. We... We breathe it in, we embrace it, and yet we accept it for what it is. We don't have to try and explain it. We don't have to try to put every single piece of it. That's part of living in, in the gift of faith and the gift of grace, that God acts for the sake of the world, for the sake of our lives, to make us new, to make this world new, to make this church new. We trust that God is continually at work in the midst of this bringing life, forgiving sins, making all things new. And yet, you know, we may participate in what God is doing, but it's like stepping into a stream that's flowing. We don't necessarily uh, push the stream along. We, more, we mainly just move with it. And so that, I think, is part of what our life in the Spirit is about us as Christians, and particularly as Lutheran Christians. You know, we're caught up in the flow of where God is working. We're caught up in what God is doing. This gift is to be a part of our, to help our movements be a part of what God is doing in the midst of the world. Um, be, in a certain way, God's work we're moving through our hands and our feet and our, our words. So, again, accept the gift that is given to you. And I know that's in a, in a very rational term that's kind of hard to explain because we want to say well this is what faith is but even taking that step back and saying but faith itself is this gift and it's something that I can rejoice in it's something that I can be grateful for rather than saying here's what I've done to accumulate this faith here is how faith has found me through God's spirit so this wraps up our discussion on the creed we're going to move into the Lord's Prayer next, and so we'll be moving through that in several weeks. But again, I thank you for watching. I thank you for your, uh, your participation, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we talk about the Lord's Prayer.